Welcome back to another episode of Let's Chat Podcast, y'all. I am your host, Jojo. And I'm Zyra. Ooh. Ooh. What's poppin'? Hope you guys liked last episode. Last episode, we talked about queer baiting. Um, Zyra gave a couple examples of, like, artist-wise, who we felt like, or the internet said is kind of considered queer baiting. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless... It don't ever stop. Everybody want to be yes. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's okay, though. But to open, for those of you who may have watched our <gasps> lives. Oh, you talking we about did, the show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did two lives last week. We did. We went on live for like an hour on TikTok. And then we did a live on Instagram, which we haven't done a live on Instagram like ever. Like we do more lives on TikTok. Yeah, I don't do. remember the last time we did a live on Instagram. We did like one live yeah. on Instagram when we first started. Right. I feel like the problem with Instagram, I do feel like a lot more people that we know personally are on there. Yeah. So as we're on it, I was like, oh shit, like I see coworkers on this live, which is a little weird. Yeah. Um, because I I be telling people that I'm an introvert and then they're like, No, you're not. And then you be out here chatting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well what can you do either way that's like something we want to like continue to work on because we've said you know getting away from patreon mm -hmm. um the be next next best thing with keeping in contact with you know our listeners and and being a little bit more you know present mm -hmm. uh is through live so yeah. you know if you guys Ain't no if you guys. You guys are definitely on social media. So if you and, ever and see you us And you better be up, and you better be following us. Yeah. Period. So if you ever see us pop up on our live, you know, come on in, say hi. We read all the comments. We, we respond do. back. So mm -hmm. take advantage of that. But yeah, so in our live last week, we were talking about um this this new show that we've been watching. Yes. So Which we finished already. Yeah, it was only like a 10 episode quick series reality TV called Couples to Thruples. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. What a whirlwind. Honestly, I don't even know. How did we, it? Oh, so my, my best friend told me about it because it's on Peacock, which we don't have. So we use their login. And they were telling me, like, oh, the show's crazy. And I told them, I was like, I'm not really crazy about reality TV, obviously, unless it's, it's Love is Blind. Mm -hmm. um, but he was like, nah, it's really good. Like, there's gay couples. And I was like, whatever, let's watch it randomly. First episode, me and Jojo were like, ah, like, it's I don't giving... know, man. Like, these people are weird. Like, it was giving, it was giving fake gay for some of them. Mm -hmm. It was giving, I'm just trying to be on TV. Yeah. It was giving drama. But um, they didn't, like, the show was really good. Not to, like, bash it. But I wish they had, like, a lesbian couple on it. But they didn't. They had. They didn't have a gay couple. Um, but pretty much, they were looking for their third. So there was like a group of couples and then a group of singles, and they would change over time with who they want to be with. And yeah, it was a little spicy. Yeah. So like, you had, I think it was like four couples, four or five. I think mm -hmm. it was four. Um, two. Well, one which happened to be like a, uh, you know, gay couple, man on man. And they were cute. Um, and then the other ones were like, you know, straight, you know, fluid, bisexual, like couples that um, were there, which were basically men and women. Mm -hmm. And they had a pool of singles that they could choose from. And they were able to like pick who they wanted to like come back to the house with them mm -hmm. and be a part of their their you know relationship to become like a throuple mm -hmm. um and if you didn't like if you kind of weren't vibing out with that person with that single there would be like uh how you say that like a swap day yeah so they were able to swap out their single for mm -hmm. a new single and and it was a it was like um like let's say you you're a couple and you really like this third person and you're feeling them um, you could say, yeah, I don't want to swap, but the single could actually be like, you know what? I'm not feeling this. I want to leave. So that means they yeah. go back to the dating pool. Um, and it was spicy. Like it was drama. Like some people got, you know, they did the whole, I guess like sexual, 
thing on like television, but some of them were like very like um they they weren't ready to do the threesomes and all of that, which obviously is is valid. Especially yeah, some were progressing uh-huh. a lot more than others because some mm-hmm. had already did it before. Yeah. Like they had open relations or like they had experienced polyamory or, mm-hmm. you know, they wanted to open up their relationship a little bit mm-hmm. more to it. So it's not as raunchy as it sounds. Yeah. Like I was expecting to definitely see more like making out and more like crazy scenes. I think in the beginning, like the first night, everyone was like like that. But then afterwards, I feel like they had a lot of deep conversations. Yeah, they started really checking themselves and was like, all mm-hmm. right, the first round that was for fun. We did that. Mm-hmm. We got, you know, our got it out, out of our system. Yeah. But now we need to be like serious. Right. And what I like about this dating show is that they actually like um would reflect on a lot of things and they would do like group um like challenges or couple challenges that actually made you question like if this third person is somebody who you could see yourself being with in this throuple and they had I don't know if they were like a therapist but like somebody would come and talk to them and like would dig deep on things and I'm like okay like I feel like you see reality tv and you never see someone actually dissect what's going on it's just drama all the time yeah she was a she was a sex relationship yeah 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 so definitely recommend getting it get your login from someone you know uh, i don't think they do free t- free trials but i do feel like it's like it's worth it yeah it's good we enjoyed it it honestly just kept getting like better and better after we thought we weren't gonna like it uh-huh and that's the thing that gets me the thing that gets me about it is like well, like she said when we first saw it we were like Ugh. like oh, it's, it's giving cringe mm-hmm. but that's because like i don't know like there's so many streaming like services now that have all types of like reality television now. And some of them actually do be cringy because it's just like, oh, this is giving very low budget. Yeah. <laughs> um, and sometimes it be, you know, it can be the like not so popular and mm-hmm. low budget ones that are actually really good. Mm-hmm. And that turned out to be really good. Yeah. So, you know. Don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, get through like the first 30 to 40 minutes of it and right. then decide. If it was on Netflix, it would definitely be like a topic of discussion. Yeah, for sure. There was this one couple there that came towards the end and they were so interesting. Like the guy was like more feminine presenting, um, like just very like he would wear girl clothes and things like that. And the girl was also very feminine, but like they had... um. They had a relationship and they were looking for a third. Um, yeah, but I feel like that's becoming so much of a thing now. I know, like just like changing. Where it's like you have, like they're they're technically straight couples, mm-hmm. but not the norm yeah. straight couple, you know? Like mm-hmm. like you said, like some, some men present more feminine mm-hmm. and then the woman presents a little bit more either just as feminine or a little bit more masculine mm-hmm. than the male but i don't know it's cute to see i'm all for it yeah so i'm gonna give you guys a quickie real quick what is the snoozy what? oh my god what I really did can you read. Pick? what is the soonest you've ever had sex with a new partner Wow, you really got into my personal business. <laughs> okay, and I okay. Did. Um, what do you mean though? Like by new partner, like somebody that I dated or someone that I messed around with? What is the soonest you slept with someone? <laughs> <laughs> I've had like a one night stand where it was just like a one th- one time thing, and then I'm I'm doing the peace sign. Okay, bye. <laughs> I mean, that's straight girl behavior. <laughs> but it's also like there was no attachment there for me okay like it's like you're not staying the night mm-hmm. and i'm not staying the night so you just throwing that so, thing oh around. lord have mercy no, stop <laughs> it <laughs> no fucks given yep what about you i'm i'm not an easy gal yeah jojo's like very picky I'm very picky. I Uh am not in a rush because it's just like once you, Mm -hmm. first of all, for me, I need a build up. Like, you know what it is though? Cause like when you date girls, I feel like 
the whole who's making the first move is thought about a lot. Mm-hmm. And with guys, like they really, any opportunity that they get, they're going to do it. If you look at them a certain way, it's like they, they just are always like ready to go. Mm-hmm. Always. Always making the first move. Like sometimes it's, it's too much. It's like, relax. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing's happening. So I feel like that's why. Like, I feel like if you if you went through a phase where you dated guys, it probably would have been the same. Nah. She said, nah. <laughs> nah. I mean, there was like eventually a time where I was just like, you know what? Let me just go for it. Let me not think about it too much. It don't got to be nothing, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying all the time it's like a, a yeah. slow dance, but mm-hmm. essentially I do like to take take the time because i want to you know build it up a little bit really get to know you because again for me if there's no like chemistry or Mm -hmm. like a vibe just from us being in each other's you know space then it's like i'm definitely not gonna have the sexual chemistry yeah towards you i for me it was just like this is not like this is for fun Mm -hmm. yeah it'd be like that Mm -hmm. i'll be down for fun i've done it all right so today's episode we're going to talk about questioning your sexuality yeah and i put out a uh what do you call them i don't even know she did like a little questionnaire or like poll or whatever on instagram yeah on instagram uh hope you guys love seeing my face i love doing a pop-up but i did get a whole bunch of responses and basically the question was what or who made you question your sexuality there are a lot (laughs) somebody said Kristen stewart in twilight and she's coming out with a new movie yeah i'm not by then by then this would have been like the movie would have came out already but it's coming out like on friday i want to say of because i have it on my calendar are you gonna watch coming on march 8th no but i think we should go watch it in the movie theater why not Okay. It's a lesbian couple. Like, hello. If you want to buy the tickets. Hello. Yeah. I don't... I mean, it could be a lesbian couple, but what is the storyline if I'm not... I sent you the TikTok. Yeah, and I wasn't sold. Really? It wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't giving. I'm willing to watch anything gay. Okay. You say that. I am. But still haven't watched The Travelers. Oh, the I haven't. other thing that I... Haven't. I no. Mm-mm. I will watch anything gay, but... I'm not sold on that storyline. Um, somebody said the first time I kissed a girl, I really liked it. Watching Joe on the facts of life in the eighties. Don't know who that is. Hmm. J Lo waiting for tonight music video, the pink power Rangers. And then my coworker. <laughs> okay. That's the a pink. lot of scenarios uh-huh, right there. Uh-huh. When I seen Cruel Intentions, LOL, Sierra's Like a Boy music video. It really be these music videos. That one's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, two years into dating a woman in my mid-30s. Why I didn't, I don't know. I don't think I read that right, but we'll move on. Degrassi. They have bitches on there kissing, and I liked it. <laughs> Honestly, I've said this before. Degrassi did it for me, too. Mm-hmm. Degrassi and South of Nowhere. And for those of you who know South of Nowhere, you're a real one. You are an OG, a throwback. You know what's up. Um, Buying earrings for a girl in high school and being so excited to give it to her while still dating men. <laughs> okay. Female actresses wanting to impress females over males. It'd be like that. The movie Gia with Angelina Jolie. Bruh, I've said that and I've told her about it and she still has yet to watch it. One thing about her is she can't watch anything old school because she like, she already doesn't have an attention span to sit and watch a full movie. But if it's an old throwback, she definitely not watching it. Um, somebody said my high school best friend, uh, and a lot of y'all said like teachers, like uh. my grade school teacher, a high school teacher, or like, so uh, it's, it's a, always the English teacher or mm-hmm. the art teacher. Oh, I had a, I had a really cool art teacher. She was just like, cool. Hmm. That's actually valid. I do think it'd be like the, 
for me, it was my social studies teacher. Really? Yeah. Good times. But that's it. There's still a lot more. But we get it. Y'all gay. (laughs) (laughs) You got a lot of responses for that. Yeah. Love it. All right. So questioning our sexuality, right? We all been there. We all done that. We still do it. I feel like that's something that never just like dies down. Like every phase within your life, I feel like you're somewhere trying to redefine your identity or who you are. So I feel like that's always going to be something that is lingering around you know Mm -hmm. some for some people that's not the case for some people you know you identify what you identify with you love what you love and that's end of story but I guess I wanted to talk about this because I feel like it's constantly a conversation like Mm -hmm. people are always talking about oh like I don't know, maybe I'll start dating women or I think I like women or I'm attracted to women. Like I hear this so much from other women. Mm -hmm. And when TikTok was like thriving, like at its peak back when COVID had first started, it's funny because like I was going back to my like older videos and I was Mm -hmm. like, boy, the comments are ruthless. Like it was crazy. And I used to have like so many women in my comments Mm -hmm. like talking about I think Oh, I think I'm gay. Yeah, wow. like, mm-hmm. I think I'm gay. Wow. Like, women on this app really got me questioning myself. Or, like, wow. Like, I'd be gay for you. Mm-hmm. Crazy. And I used to think it was funny because I was like, y'all just chatting. Mm-hmm. But, I, like, for some people, it really was, I think, TikTok at that time, like, in that time yeah. frame, really brought to light, like, gay. Yeah. And I didn't have TikTok during that time. Like, I, I did get TikTok, but it wasn't, like... For the whole, like, um, the whole part where we were, like, you know, indoors, couldn't leave anywhere. It was more towards the end. and But, but even when I got on TikTok, you know, it's, it's really based on the algorithm. So, I really was just getting a lot of sad things. Like, I was just sad. That's because, like, everything was, that you were liking. I was depressed. Like, it was just, like, a lot of quotes and just, like, sad music. Everything was sad. I tread lightly with those likes because I like to keep my timeline real gay. Yeah, and I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know at the time. At the time, I I had just got onto TikTok, but it was like most of my feed was like quotes and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I hear that all the time too, and I still hear that now. And like, I know there's straight people who listen to the podcast that I've heard before, but I want to make it known that it's like dating women is not easier. Mm-hmm. If you think that you maybe want to date a woman because you think it's easier than dating a man, I'm gonna stop you. You're wrong. You're I'm gonna stop something you. else, sweetheart. Honestly, it's 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 hard. Don't like play it's like, yourself in the words of my girlfriend. <laughs> it's way harder. Like you have to try. You ha- like it's like it's not easy. I feel like with a guy, honestly, it's like you could give them the bare minimum and like the relationship is fine. But I feel like with women, it's just it's not easy. They need a lot of attention and like a lot of communication. And I feel like with men, the communication lacks for some reason. And like sometimes that's good and sometimes it's bad. Um, and like when I was dating men, I guess for me, they never knew like how I felt because I did I wouldn't really communicate. Like if anything bothered me or anything like that, I would just play it cool because I, at the end of the day, I was like, I'm not gonna sit here and like try to argue with you, like. In the back of my head, I was like, this isn't going to work out anyway, so I'm not going to nag or say anything. There's that avoidance. Yeah, so it was like, we never really had arguments or anything like that. Like, relationships were easy. Um, And, like, with women, it was, like, a lot of communication, a lot, a lot, a lot of that. Um, So it's definitely not easier. I don't do easy anyway, so. (laughs) It's not. I didn't. I don't play those games to have mm-hmm. things easy. Um, but yeah, I feel like, you know, there's been a lot of people just very like, and even just from responses and emails and things that we get from listeners that are like, hey, like, mm-hmm. how do I know? How do I know I like women? I'd be interested in women. How do I go about um, exploring that? Or like, should I stay on, you know, this side of my sexuality where mm-hmm. I, I'm just, I just stay with what I know. 
Um, so I feel like that's been a surrounding theme for me mm-hmm. with even people close to me mm-hmm. that are just like, I think I want to explore. Right. Um, and I think that it's not a bad thing at all. I think it's a little bit, it's nice. I don't know. I find it exciting when I hear like people like being open to potentially exploring and seeing like what else could be for them you know um Mm -hmm. because i think like we're in a time where it's like this is nothing i but then part of me feels like people say that like they say like oh i want to maybe i want to explore dating women but i feel like when it when it's like reality and you're actually in it and you're like oh shit like i'm gonna have to come out like it's like i'm gonna have to tell like my family and shit like it's like once you're already dating someone and you're like okay like this is going like it's like once you have to come out that's that that's when it's like real like this is not it's not a joke anymore and then that's when it becomes scary because you don't know how people are gonna react so it's just like a lot of like anxiety like leading up to like oh my god when i come out or like whatever how they're gonna react and things like that so i feel like at first at first it sounds like cool but honestly a part of me kind of gets scared for them in a sense i don't know not that i had a bad experience i mean if you've listened to the podcast you know um that when i came out my parents were really accepting but i don't know you just don't know other people's like circumstance yeah um but i did see this tiktok that um got a lot of views and likes and i feel like a lot of women could relate to this and it says me talking about how i'm so uncertain on my sexuality because i've only ever dated men but also women are hot but also i'd be terrified about being intimate with a woman because i wouldn't know what to do and also i don't really seem to attract women but i also hate the way men treat me but i will want to marry a man and have children but also women are so much nicer that actually low-key grinds my gears but this is how a lot of women feel when they're like, I should question because like they're feeling like this TikTok. Right. Mm-hmm. But the whole like marry a man. Right. I want a family. Right. That's that's when it becomes real because it's like you. OK, that's fine. You want to like it's people can explore their sexuality. But it's like if you're going to date a woman, will you ever marry her or is this for fun? Yeah. And for like. Just for you to have somebody. Just for you to right get the experience. Because it's not fair for the other person. Right. But then I think like in situations like that, that's where you need to like uncover that. You need to be able to tell them like, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm just looking to explore, see if like I'm this is even mm-hmm. where I want to be. Um, Because you do have some women that do explore and love it and think like, wow, like I would never trade this for the world i'm so happy i landed here i love women and i want to love them till the day i die right and And it could be really mm -hmm. like eye-opening for them no it could and i agree with that but i feel like the like how do you i feel like for people who are listening to this it's like how do you even start so i remember when i had like the feeling of like I've known since I was little, obviously. There's been a bunch of scenarios. That's crazy to me. But as an adult, but it's things that I didn't... um, What's crazy to you? It's the whole, you've known since you were a kid. Because it was like, um, I had a lot of like weird interactions with girls and like kissing in closets with girls and like... But it felt... This is new to me. Yeah, it felt really bad. And like, those are things that... I still think about it and I'm like, oh my God, like, what if like my mom would have found out or like, like an adult, uh, an adult found us once and it was just like, it was in Puerto Rico and I, um, I would go there on vacation. Um, and I'm like, I was so scared because I was like, what if they tell my mom? Like, it was like this whole thing, but whatever. But I never knew anyone that was gay. So I was just like, it was, it was something that I really just brushed off. But to fast forward as an adult, when I was feeling like, oh, I think I'm attracted to this person, but I don't want to date that person because it was just like a conflict of interest for me. Like it was someone that I probably shouldn't have dated, but whatever. And I told my friend and then she was like, why don't you get on an app? And I said, oh, yeah, all right, let's 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 get on this app. I, I get on the app and there was one girl who hit me up. 
Um, and she ended up FaceTiming me. And then we FaceTimed, but it felt so weird to me. Like, I was just like, it's no, like, this is not it. Like, it was just, I don't know if it was her or it was just, it was just weird. Like, I was like, I need to see this person in person. Mm -hmm. The apps were not working for me. Like, I need, I'm the type of person that I need to meet someone in person. Like, after that FaceTime with her, I just never talked to her again because I was just like, I don't know if she, I don't know, girl. I don't know if it was giving catfish, but it was just, I wasn't feeling her. Just, it just was not working. No, that yeah, time. like, it's, I feel like you have to meet people in person. Yeah, but why do you, how do you feel like that that would be different from FaceTime? Because I would get the vibe and, like, I don't know. It's just, I'm a, but that's for me. Like, I like to meet people in person for the most part. I mean, I met you online, but that was different. We made it very quickly known mm -hmm. uh we're gonna meet yeah but yeah I, I prefer in person too but that's real life crazy you say you was kissing girls in closets this is can you just stop me. can you stop can you wow, stop wow she's talking about she gay gay she been knew she was gay gay that's crazy to me why is that crazy to you i don't know because you just so uh, you were giving so straight Oh, really? Not like before I met you, but the shit that you be talking about, it was just like, wow, you really lived a chunk of your life so straight. Oh, yeah, because I did it, guys and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> um, but do you feel like um, sex sexuality is a spectrum? Like some people feel like it, it's a spectrum. Like it could flip flop. Yeah. Mm hmm. I don't, I don't want to say flip-flop, but I do think, like, it's definitely on a scale of, like, whatever it is that you're looking to find, whatever it is that you identify with, whatever it is that, you know, attracts you. I think maybe, like, um, sexually, it could be a spectrum, but I feel like in reality, when it comes down to, like, marriage and, like, living with someone and, like, actually building a life with someone it's not a spectrum not everyone could do that what do you mean like not like like women are okay with sleeping with, with women even if they're straight mm -hmm. they consider them, some, themselves straight but when it comes down to like actually being in a relationship with one they're not okay with that oh so you're saying yeah just like relationship wise like whatever yeah. you, whoever you would mess with for fun mm -hmm. wouldn't be who you'd take serious essentially yeah yeah but there are people who do mm -hmm. like there are many couples that even like two women that started off straight that like yeah are like oh I, f I fell in love with my best friend and now we're like both experiencing this new mm -hmm. thing together yeah if I'm not mistaken, there is a couple like that on TikTok. I've seen them before. I don't know their name, but they're like all over YouTube now and got a channel and everything now too. Oh. But there are many um, like cases that are like that, like where they, they're both straight and like, but I do think like, I don't know, you, you just have a bad taste for, I don't want to say a bad taste, but like that's your preference is straight women is not for you. Yeah. Cause I'm not an experiment, but I think that it's not the worst thing in the world because we all started somewhere and we all started with somebody. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just the person that really, it takes a certain person that could really uh, shed light on the person you are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I am not against dating straight women. I've dated straight women. Um, and that was the experience. Mm -hmm. It shed it light. And now they've been gay ever since. Like, mm -hmm. Um, but I can understand there being a preference because it's like, oh, some don't want to teach or want to go through the process of like going yeah, step for step and stuff much. like that. There's too much. We're um, not doing that. but we all got to start somewhere. But I do think like it could be successful. I've seen people date that, you know, make it a long time, mm -hmm. but I can understand how like you saying that, that like, there's not a spectrum when it comes to like considering serious relationship mm -hmm. but i don't know everybody's different and i feel like depending on what you want from a relationship and what you want from a partner that it can be mm -hmm. i get really confused i'm not gonna lie i'm not good with terminology i'm not good with understanding all the ins and outs of 
um, our, you know, knowing sexuality and gender and all these things, like these are things that I continue to learn as I research and bring, like we bring to the table for the podcast. Um, so it's a wealth of knowledge for us all, but sexuality versus sexual orientation. Um, I don't know that this is the best and most simplified definition or whatever you might have to look it up yourself um this is why i go to tiktok because i I'd rather just somebody tell me than uh-huh. for me to have to read but uh according to verywell.com it says that it is crucial to remember that sexuality and sexual orientation are not the same sexual orientation is part of our sexuality but our sexuality also includes our behaviors, romantic and emotional desires, and our identity. Sexual orientation only speaks to attraction. So I don't know if that made sense to you. It did. Okay. I had to continue looking because I was like, that makes sense. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. No, that don't make sense. I get weird when I'm reading shit. Because I, I, I get lost in like the words. Mm-hmm. But if I'm not mistaken, it was basically saying that with sexual orientation, it has to do with what you identify with. Um, whether that being gender, such as like uh, like your gender identity, whether it's like you being straight, you being bisexual, you being gay, you being like, you know, whatever label or identity that you um, identify with. Um, and like that's clearly what you're attracted to. And then sexuality is kind of like whoever or whatever you like, does like, what you pursue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you could like anybody, like it doesn't come down to uh, sexual orientation Mm -hmm. and like, you know, implying that, oh, well, I'm gay and I only want to mess with someone who's gay. Like it's just like, yeah. Kind of like almost fluidity. Yeah. For better lack of terms Mm -hmm. i don't know uh i still be trying to figure this shit out um so you can look that every day if it didn't make sense yeah every day literally so when did you feel like you started questioning your sexuality now that we know that you were kissing girls in closets (laughs) i guess back then but it was something that i would ignore because i literally didn't know anyone who was gay but like could you remember And it's something that i didn't see on the media either but like do you think like okay knowing now was there anything in your past that like i don't know kind of set it off for you that was just like hmm like for me like as we were saying in some of the instagram responses it was just like i used to think my teachers were pretty as hell Mm mm-hmm I used to think like some of the girls that I used to be, you know, trying to be friends with were pretty as hell. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't think there was ever a time where I didn't think, you know, in my younger days, like a girl was pretty or like, you know, now like women are beautiful, like from their youngest to their oldest, like it Mm -hmm. never fails. So it was like, I guess in a sense, like before I knew that it was like, oh, I might like them. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I'm attracted to them and I don't just think that they're pretty. Um, I used to just think like, oh, like they're so pretty. Like, I wish I was that pretty type mm-hmm. type of thing. So I think like in my mind back then, it was like I was more so comparing myself to them and how I would kind of wish like almost like envy, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then now I realize I was like, no, bitch, you were not mm-hmm. like. Yeah. You thought they was just popping like yeah. you were attracted to that. Yeah, there's like a meme that's like do I want to be them or do I want to be with them or right. something like something like that. So that's definitely what you were feeling. Valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like yeah, for you what do you think like it was like mm. I don't know. It's hard to say and I feel like um I can't fully share the examples because it's something that I still have to like reflect on and probably go to therapy and talk about like inappropriate relationships that I witnessed as like a young child. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I was saying before, I didn't really see that portrayed on on like media. There was obviously no social media or anything. So it was like, 
it was literally something that I just wasn't aware of. Like, I knew maybe, like, there was gay people, but I personally didn't know anybody. So was there, like, I guess you're kind of saying there's not anybody. So there wasn't, like, well, then at what point do you feel like where it became a little bit more present to you, where it was like, oh, I resonate with that, you know? Like, um, I mean, when I went to college, um, I had a couple of roommates and... One of them was bi and the other one, everyone thought she was gay. And then we would hang out with this other girl who was gay. So I feel like then I was kind of like more open to it. But even then I had just started a relationship with a guy. So it was just kind of like tunnel vision because I'm with this person and I was with them for like two, two years and not for nothing, but like with when it's like you kind of only have the options that are around you. And I wasn't, uh, I wasn't feeling the options around me. Mm. It was like, I knew some gay girls in, in my classes, but it was like, I'm not attracted to them yeah. just because they're gay. Like it wasn't really a thing. I was, I, I, and like, that's where I spent most of my time and you, you're in college and like, I went to a small school, but it was like, that's where I spent most of my time. And like, yeah, you have social media, but social media wasn't as big as it, it is, is now. now yeah. And yep. even then, I went through phases where I would delete my social media so I could, like, focus on school and, and all that. That was very ballsy of you. Oh, yeah, girl. I have not done none of oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Deleted it twice, the social media completely. Good for you. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I would say, like, for me, like, I envision... I guess, like, in the beginning, you think, like, oh, you know, you see your parents and that's the example. Man, woman, boom. And I used to have that and identify that with that at one point until it was like, like, as I was saying, watching shit like Degrassi, um, South of Nowhere. That was really the rising for me. That was the upbringing because that was in my time where like I already was kind of questioning my sexuality because I had like already experienced something with a with a girl at the time. Um, I was like, what, 14? Something like that. So, you know, that came around and it, it like, it just felt like me. It made sense. I don't know. And I hate when people say that, oh, you know, this is why you can't put this shit on TV and, you know, you're just influencing, Mm -hmm. you know, this lifestyle and this life onto people and children. And it's just like, it didn't influence me though. Mm -hmm. Like if anything, it made me feel like, Oh wow. Like I guess it, it helped me to more so find myself Mm -hmm. and who I was and what I like felt comfortable and resonated with because even though I was trying to fit myself into this stereo, not stereotypical, but like this norm idea of what, relationships or you know couples would be like like Mm -hmm. i didn't have a boyfriend for a lifetime yeah and i would like to say that it was because i was scared of my parents and i was they like my mom didn't fuck around but all in all i also think it was because i wasn't really that invested in taking that risk yeah like i know i knew so many girls i had I have a bunch of girl cousins that would do the dumbest shit, Mm -hmm. didn't care about getting in trouble, worried about the consequences later, and would be out in these streets to go meet a boy. And I never felt the urge to like- To do that. To, yeah, to risk Mm -hmm. getting my ass whooped and dragged, like, to go see some I also feel like you didn't have those type of friends that would want to do that, too. Like, one of your best friends was gay, so it was just like- to. For y'all to be chilling with guys, like, that's not going to happen. But when I was in high school, I would literally, my friends were, like, crazy. So it was, like, meet up in guys' houses, and I would be, like, we it would be kind of be, like, a double date type of thing. And, like, that would happen, like, a lot. Like but I, I had just, a bunch of female cousins. So yeah. it was, like, if it would have started, it would have started with them. Oh, okay. I don't think it would have started, with, like, with my friends. Really? Yeah. Nah, because I am I was growing up really close with, like, mm-hmm. you know, my family. So it was, like, when it got, it wasn't until, like, around high school where it was, like, okay, I'm growing outside of my family and I'm, like, you know, mm-hmm. socializing, making friends, blah, blah, blah. But I think by that time I was already questioning myself and, like, you know, exploring because, like, 
honestly, high school is where the shit happens, you know? High school really is, is where you you start considering and thinking about relationships. You're mm-hmm. thinking about sex. You're thinking about sexuality. Like, yeah. that is where you the exploration comes in, you know? That's where you're trying to find yourself and, mm-hmm. you know, good times. Yeah. But all in all, like, things change. Because I think for... For me in high school, it was like, okay, yeah, I'm, I've explored this and I love this. And like, oh my God, I think I'm gay or a lesbian or like I'm a stud lesbian or I'm a femme. Le- like mm-hmm. it, all that label shit. And then, yeah. you know, here I am fucking years later and I'm like, that was fun. But I don't identify with a lot of those things now. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm still gay. I identify with that. But just more so like presentation wise, mm. you know? I don't feel like um, I need to be an overly masculine individual just yeah. because, you know, or I, I only need to date femmes just because I like femmes, right. whatever. Like, I'm on a, I guess, a spectrum, so to say, when yeah. it comes to, like, what I prefer in dating. Mm-hmm. But Why did you feel the need to, like, explore your sexuality, like, later on, like, after you date a woman? Like, why did you feel like you needed to date a man to, like, see see what it was like? Um, I don't know. I, I think for me, that exploring time with dating a guy was just, it was kind of just a me thing. Mm-hmm. It was just wanting to, like, have the power to do what I wanted and for me to take control of my sexuality Cause I felt like, I don't know how to explain it. I just feel like, especially as women, like you can't, it's like you don't have control or like you can't have control over your sexuality or like your just sex period. Mm -hmm. It's like. If you do, if you like, if you're too over sexualized or too sexually like active or involved, like you're considered, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't want to say the word, but you know. Oh, I was called a prude all the time. Like it was like, it's either you're a prude or you're like a hoe. Yeah. I was a prude, uh, according to people. And so I guess for me, like within that time, I was so. I was so on the path of like, I'm going to do shit just to say that I did it Mm -hmm. and because I can do it and because I chose to do it and I don't have to answer to nobody for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, That was just the basis of like me being in control of me and doing what I wanted to do without someone telling me that I've never seen you do that or why, like, that's not you. You just like, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was a it was a past relationship trauma. I mean, I feel like for the most part, all of your friends and family seem like super supportive about it, and nobody gave you shit about it. Yeah, I was like, wow, I'm about to confuse a lot of people. I know there was real confused. A lot of people, and I mean, it's almost like how people talk about like, uh, what is it when you're like embarrassed or something. It's like when you know you gay, but you're trying to hide it. Oh, man. Oh, man. We were just well, talking about the, it. Com, 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 sexuality. Yeah, know. yeah. I don't know how to say it. I don't know Damn, how to say it. Damn, I uh-huh. forget. Com, compulsory heterosexuality, something like that. Yeah, kind of like when it's like you, you know you're gay or mm-hmm. like you know like you testing those waters, but you're trying to hide it. Like you try, you're still trying to fit in the norm of being normal like mm-hmm. because- that's what's considered normal. Being straight is considered normal. So I want to fit in the norm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be the. So I think like when I did explore, you know, in getting involved with the guy, I was like embarrassed mm-hmm. and kind of like in that sense of like, wow, like, I don't know, like it almost invalidated my sexuality because not I you, strongly not, identify right. with gay. You that's know? how bisexual people feel all the time. 
I can't speak for y'all. I mean, but it's just like it's it's the same thing where it's like they were dating a woman, now they're dating a man, and it was like, what's going on? What's going on? They could go back and forth however much they want. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's just interesting. Yeah, but it was how, a me thing. It was okay. like a part of it was that oh, like now people are gonna think or question me or whatever, whatever. But it was more so a me thing too because it was mm -hmm. like, damn, like girl, you was a gold star. You was like that was that was the almighty for me, and it was just like. Uh, but eventually I was like, girl, I don't care. Like people do this shit all the time. Bisexuals do this shit all the time. Like, you know, yeah. it's just like, at what point do we, you know, just let people live, do what they do and like stop giving a fuck. Mm -hmm. You know, ain't nobody going to not date me because I fucking, I entertain the guy, you know. You never know. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> but majority of the, the girls that pursue me anyway are Fucking, I feel like it's a little harder. Not that they don't exist. There's straight lesbians out here, completely 100% gay and have mm -hmm. always been gay. And honestly, that's been a challenge for me to even find well, women who are like gay or lesbian. I feel like every girl that I've come in contact with or that I've talked to or dated or whatever has either been straight or bisexual. Mm. Like, I honestly don't think that there's that many like straight up gay. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, you know what? I want to date somebody or like be with somebody who's been in a relationship and have dealt with women. But like going, going with that, mm -hmm. do you feel like you still identify right now with bisexuality. I like to say queer. Okay. So when did that and, change and, and for you? So, I mean, I feel like I've talked about it a bunch of times and I'm pretty sure that people are like, well, what are you? What are you? What are you? Um, I feel like I'm coming to terms with the fact that I think guys are attractive like that. Like I'm not going to lie. If someone's attractive, they're attractive. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would I wouldn't marry a guy. Like I when I look at my future, I don't ever see myself doing the whole traditional getting married to a guy, having kids. Like it's like so it's hard to say that. Cause it's like if you're bisexual, don't you have to be open with everything? <laughs> you know? I don't know. And I feel like most bisexuals actually feel the opposite way. Like they feel like they can never get married to a woman. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm obviously only speaking for myself, really. So can't really speak for everyone else. So, so that's why I like to say queer because it's kind of like an umbrella term, and I don't have to answer any questions because I already know how people feel about bisexuals and how they're like at the bottom of of the LGBTQ umbrella. Respect is just like this small. You really think it's that bad? For I really bisexuals? think so, girl. People are still in my like in that like in our uh, podcast videos arguing in the comments about bisexuality, and like I, my um my whole thing on that is like if you don't want to date a bisexual, then don't date them. That's all. Like if that's really something that bothers you, then just don't date them. You're just what when you do that though, you're like eliminating a lot of people from the pool. And you're going to be left with like a very small amount. And I feel like now with sexuality, it's becoming, people are becoming so open with it. So they're like identifying as like pansexual and things like that. Like if you have a problem with bisexuality, I feel like pansexual kind of also fits in that term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So do you feel like that's what, so queer is what you're comfortable with now? But yeah, you, because I don't have to answer any questions. And I also feel like when you meet people for the first time, like even in a work setting, even men, like you say bisexual and like, I don't know, it's like a, it's like a weird smirk. And it's like, I don't want to deal with that. Like, I don't, yeah, especially because I'm fem. anybody that you're bisexual? I don't know. It's just like, I guess like a, uh, I guess like a. Especially like in a work environment. I mean, I I'm mean, only telling you if I'm mm -hmm. dating, if I'm dating a guy, I'm telling you I got a boyfriend. If I'm dating a girl, I'm telling you that I got a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I don't need to tell you that I'm bisexual. I don't need yeah, to tell yeah, you that you I'm gay. Yeah, yeah, you definitely don't, don't need. need to... I guess it depends on like what type of work environment it is. Like in corporate, they have like ERG groups, which means like little groups for people, like an LGBTQ group or 
uh, an Asian group, Latino group, black people. So it's like you have your groups where you can, you know, talk to people who are in that community. So like it's a it's something that gets brought up here and there. It depends on how comfortable you are to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I do try to make it known. Like I have a girlfriend. So like, yeah, it's not something that I'm hiding ever. So do you feel like as you continue to go on that that identity will change? Um like that you'll no longer resonate with queer and maybe go back to identifying as bisexual or not identifying with anything at all or progressing into something else? Um I think the la the labels are just like so tough because things change and you see people who are bisexual who then are like pansexual and like going down the list so it's like i never want to say something is firm mm -hmm. when things have changed valid speaking of identities i have a list also from uh verywell.com mm -hmm. where it just is telling you everything from the lgbtqia plus um just in case i feel like we've talked about this before but is, there's no harm in going back over it just so we all have a good understanding so to start is lesbian which is a woman that's only attracted to women gay um is same gender attraction mostly used for men but also women who identify as gay use gay instead of lesbian which i prefer gay that's just me um bisexual means that uh, they're attracted to more than one gender, mostly, com most commonly cis men and cis women. Um, transgender is gender identity difference from sex assigned at birth, but it's not considered a sexual identity. Um, queer or questioning is in the process of discovering your sexual orientation, intersex, which is quoted here also not a sexual identity just like transgender um but it's in the I, it's under the identities um people born with bodies that don't fit the male slash female gender binary asexual is a person who doesn't experience sexual attraction to other people it is on the spectrum implying that sexual attraction isn't typically a part of their day-to-day -day. now the plus is <laughs> pansexual someone who is pansexual is attracted to all genders of people demisexual is a person who only becomes attracted to other people once they have formed an emotional bond to be described then they can be described as demisexual sapiosexual these fucking, There's so many these terms get crazy so many. uh sapiosexual i hope i said that right people who whose attraction to others is based on intellectual identity okay <laughs> scalio sexual <laughs> i don't or know scolio? Never, scolio i don't know i never heard of that uh this is a newer term which refers to those who are usually attracted to people who fall outside the typical gender binary that means that trans non-binary and gender queer people may be the ones that a scalio sexual person is generally attracted to and yeah that's that's basically lgbtq plus ia for you i need to i need to see how the hell you say this word because <laughs> it was a little crazy right scalio i'm gonna have her i'm gonna have her say it let's see scalio sexuality scoliosexual Scolio. yeah it's giving scoliosis <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah so it's like it says for example a scoliosexual person might be attracted to a cisgender man who wears makeup or nail polish or a cisgender woman who wears men's clothing mm. right. i like that sometimes what <laughs> like those like that that type of look yeah yeah but that's it Any last minute things before we go into a family meeting? Um, if you feel like you're in a very, I don't know, 
discovery error. Like take the time and do it at your own pace. Do it in the way you feel most comfortable. Don't take people's word for it. And what I mean when I say don't take people's word for it is, you know, you can ask till you're blue in the face about, you know, people's experience with coming out or discovering, you know, their journey and what it was like for them to explore their sexuality. And like she had mentioned earlier, not everybody's experience is going to be the same. You, you can explore that and might you know you may not like it and that's okay but at least you know you put those thoughts to bed when you took the chance on yourself to figure out what it is that you like you know so yeah. basically like I just don't want you to be scared I obviously want you to you know find the confidence and the power to want to explore for your own you know, clarity. Mm -hmm. Um, but just don't take anybody's word for it. And with that being said, that also means like, don't let people tell you that, I don't know, maybe you should try dating the same sex or I don't know, maybe, you know, you should identify with this or like, you, you know, you look like you could be like this, like nobody knows, but you, so don't let people dictate and, and tell you who you are or who you should be or who you're supposed to be. Like only, you know, that, Mm -hmm. And the only way you get that clarity is when you're ready and you take your time to -hmm. figure that out. And honestly, I take pride in the self-discovery. Anytime that I feel like I'm shedding my skin and I'm growing into something else, I know that wherever I'm going, whatever path that leads me on, I'm going to love myself at the end of the day for it. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can do. Right. Period. (laughs) Now we're going to get into the family meeting. All right. I was with a guy married for 10 years, come out as gay a year ago, and I left him. Since being out of that relationship, I realized that he is a huge narcissist and emotionally abused me. He used to say I had saggy boobs to the point I had a breast reduction, big thighs, big arms, etc. He try- I tried coming out to him as bi, and he took me to therapy to get it out of me which made me suppress my sexuality even more. And then I realized I'm a full bo- a full-blown lesbian. I am finally the person I am supposed to be. I am now in a very happy relationship with the most amazing Period. girl. With the most amazing girl who showers me with love, affection, and compliments. I wonder how many p- other people are out there that can relate. Love you guys. From the UK. Ooh. Hey. Love oh, this. Love. I love this. And I mean... I feel like, see, it's just never too late. Like, married for 10 years with a guy, and now she's in a relationship with a woman. I really, you know, sometimes it could be, like, disheartening to see that people take so much crap from other people or, like, relationships yeah. to then realize that, oh, my God, I didn't deserve that ever. Mm-hmm. And I deserved so much more. Right. Um, And like you said, it's it's better late than ever. But, you know, for some people, it really just be never. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's hard. But I just I hope like whoever's listening to this that feels like there's a never, you know, that, you know, only you can make that choice and make that decision, you know. Right. So good for you for following your heart. Love that. Next question. Uh, I feel like I am being tested in my life slash career. I usually am the type of person to work hard and progress in my life. I just graduated with my master's degree and Ooh. started a new job, but I have never felt so lost and alone than I do right now. Of course, the thought of giving up has come to mind, but I continue to move forward every day. I am single and have prioritized my career for the past three years. Any advice on how to navigate through life and the stress when you're doing when you're dealing with so much uncertainty and lost feelings. Thank you. Love y'all both. Love you back. This is a really good question that you have for two Virgos right now. Yes. I think you resonate with this more than I do. No, I think you resonate this too though. I mean, I I think okay, so You're going you're going through a transition right now with, with your yeah. job. So I am very like uh, 
career driven, I guess so to say. I just don't think that me and you are the same type of career driven. I think we're just in different fields. I feel yeah. like if you were in corporate, you would probably be the same. Yeah. But I think corporate is crazy. Like I think that <laughs> shit for that for the animals. I, I think it's crazy too. That shit's crazy. Like I know what I do isn't, you know, it's so far from corporate, but like it also almost plays the same. Yeah. But yeah, but you can't downplay it. I feel like what you do is important. No, no, no. Um but yeah, I think like within the last transition that I've just been going through with like leaving my previous job and then a whole move and now starting in a new work environment, um, it's a lot. It's a lot because it was so much uncertainty for me. So much because it was like, what am I about to get into? What am I going to do? Like, do I continue with the experience, with the work experience that I have and that I know and that like has carried me the last few years? Or do I just completely start over with something completely new that I've never done? I've never like, I would have to like start all over with these building blocks. Um, I don't know. It's a very scary thing. And and luckily, like, you know, I stood by my choice in moving forward and what I already had the experience in, but it took a whole lot of, a whole lot of, a whole lot of shit. How would you recommend someone deal with that? You know, reach out to a friend or two and, and it got to a point where it was like, all right, like you can't, you can't, you know you can't bear this weight by yourself. Like you, even if you are like, you have to be able to talk to somebody about it. Like you have to be able to get it off your chest. And like around that time, I guess the best way I can say that I was kind of sort of trying to figure out how to deal with it was doing little things like voice notes, um, to where I was kind of just talking to myself because I was like, I just need to hear what I'm saying out loud. And I think once that I release it and say it out loud, like that's weight off my chest. Um, and then eventually, like, I found comfort in, like, reaching out to a friend. I mean, I agree with that for sure. For sure. I feel like I could do, like, a whole podcast episode on, like, just, like, career and life because I've had so many different type of jobs. Um, but I do remember that when I was getting my master's, I was a graduate assistant. So um, I was pretty much busy all the time working and going to school. And um, when I got my master's, I actually didn't get a job in my field. So and I knew that and like that was OK with me because I I learned that during that time I didn't want to do what I was studying anymore. It was just like the workload was too much for the pay that you were getting. So I decided to go a different path. Um, I mean, don't regret it at all. It was an experience. But I remember like during that time, like right before I got that new job, I was like so unhappy. And then that was like right before the pandemic. And I went to a therapist because I would literally like cry. Like it was like this job is like so draining to me. And then it was like relationship was draining to me. The fact that I was still in the closet was draining for me. It was literally like so many things going on. My health was in the best. It was so many things. I was like, I can't. Like my first therapy session, I was crying because so much things that you have like um, that you hold on to for so long and you're like, this is wrong and this is wrong. And I just felt like there was nothing balanced in my life. Um, but what I say with that is like with careers, like it's okay for you to go to another job. Like, I feel like sometimes people like to stay loyal to their company or whatever the case is. But if you truly hate it, I'm not saying quit. What I'm saying is like, look elsewhere, elsewhere. go on LinkedIn, like message people and ask for a referral. Or like when you get a referral, you get that, that um, interview. Um, because if you don't like your job, like what's the point? We're there literally 40 hours and more. So you might as well at least enjoy some of it. Um, and if it's making you that unhappy, then it's like, it's time to like move on. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for now. You can be career driven, but just, you need to know how to balance that with life. Granted, everybody's not, you know, relationships isn't for everybody, but it's like, 
you still need love in your life. Right. So that can be your friends. That could be your family. That could be yourself. Mm-hmm. But you do need to make time for that. Right. Yes, we all want to be successful. Yes, we all want to accomplish all these goals and have this ginormous financial. Like we don't want financial burdens at all. Like, mm-hmm. we want, well, of course, we want to be financially free. But realistically, like everybody's version of success is different. I think for me, the main thing is like, what does my home look like? You know, how is me, how, how am I and how is my home? How's my person? How's my family? Like, because those more than anything, memories is what we live off of, Mm -hmm. you know? And once that's gone, it's gone. Like once these time, you can't buy time, you don't get time back. So it's like, that is essentially what we live for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your job's always going to be there. It is what it is. Um, and they'll replace you quicker than you freaking know it. So, oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, give yourself time for yourself and for your family and whatever love that you have. Yeah. And that's it. All right, y'all. Yeah. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. We didn't have any voicemails in this episode, but please leave us a voicemail of a question, story, whatever you want to share. And the number is going to be in our description. Deuce, deuce, mother goose. Bye. Is this stopped?